Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the UIM Completionist. Usually we start these off with my pay to play UIM, but this time since this is technically a two account series, we're gonna kick it off with the free to play UIM and the AT Prayer. Anyways, nice round level to kick off this video and well, I just hope you'll enjoy. In the last video we did a bunch of PVMing on the main UIM, we finished doing 100 KC at Zolra and then I said I need a long break, so that's what I did. I came here to Castle Wars and I AFK'd 100 games for 300 Castle Wars tickets. And that together with me selling my decorative sword that I could stash in my POH gives us 800 tickets, which is enough to buy every single reward and get a bunch of new collection log slots. So now with all of this bought, we jumped up by seven collection log slots and the Castle Wars section is now fully greened out. I thought a little about how I want to spend the tickets so I can store my rewards for some cosmetic things later down the line. And I knew for sure that I want all the halos, so we got all the halos. And then I managed to buy the entire tier 2 and tier 1 armor sets and they're all storable. And with the remainder I decided to buy the mage set and the ranger set. And we can neatly store everything in our wardrobe, so that is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah. As you can see here are the halos and here's the mage and ranger armor. They're not uh, the coolest looking, although the mage hat is definitely something. Uh, but I'm just glad to be able to store these. Since we still didn't get an onyx, I'm gonna go back to Zolra, but not for more than like 100 KC. We're gonna end at 500 tops. And if we don't get an onyx by then, I will just go and spend some of my Chaos runes for Tokul and buy it that way. What you're watching on the screen right now is me trying out a new Zalra method, which is using Bofa only, so we are not bringing any mage switch whatsoever. Uh, the upsides of this are I don't have to switch gear, so it's a lot more chill and I don't spend any runes or scales for trident charges, so that is obviously fantastic. Uh, there are some downsides, such as you're extremely inaccurate on magma phase and still a bit inaccurate on the green phase. So uh, that seems like it slows down the kill a little bit, but since we don't have to bring any gear switches, I can bring more food, so I went from 1 to maybe 2 kills per trip to consistently doing 2 kills per trip, so that is fantastic. Finally something to record, after 37 kills we got a new PB by 2 seconds using the BOFA only method. So while this is a little more inconsistent and in general a little slower, we can still PB with it if all goes well. So that was 500 KC at Zalra and believe it or not we got nothing and not even a new unique or something. Absolutely nothing, no uniques at all. I was hoping for at least one to just dismantle for scales, but I guess we are given absolutely nothing by the snake. So that's 100 KC in the last video and 100 KC in this one. I think I'm gonna keep going until I use up those ranging potions, especially because I still have a bunch of those teleports, but then probably will be ending it. Let's hope to snag something, uh, preferably an onyx or another unique, but Anything, man, that, that gives scales is also fine by me. Random elite clue? Ooh, holy wraps. I don't think this item is necessarily good by any means. The prayer bonus is just not worth it on the glove slot, but a new unique. Yes, that's good. Remember when I said I'm just gonna get to 500 KC? And then when I said I'm just gonna use up the ranging potions, well, I used up the ranging potions and we still didn't get any unique. So I spent a couple evenings at Redwoods to chill out. 
got a couple clues and now we're gonna go back so let's open one medium and two hard clues Zamorak Crozier in the first hard and nothing in the second uh, I got an elite clue at Zalra that required me to go to Letia, so I usually kill guards in Privdinas for the teleport, and we got a teleport and some... an enhanced crystal teleport seed from a Privdinas guard, so that is a collection log slot, so we are happy about that, I'll not have to thieve elves for this. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little bit speechless, but uh, pretty cool. And the elite clue in question. Dragon Square Shield Ornament Kit. And that's 600 KC with the only thing to report so far being clues. And that is 700 KC and... 400 dry. I even get a shield left half for the clip. Well, now it's personal. I have no idea how I managed to pull it off, but after hundreds of KC with no personal best, I just jumped from 142 to 108. I can show you that the previous... Well, I can't because I logged out, but my previous personal best was 142, so that is a crazy jump. That's 750 KC at Zalra and 450 KC dry of absolutely anything. I'm sick and tired of this place. Let's leave. Goodbye 30k Chaos Runes. And hello Uncut Onyx. Here's the Zenite fused together. And finally here is Zenite Necklace made. And enchanted to Necklace of Anguish. So compared to the Fury that I'm using right now, the Anguish provides 5 higher range attack bonus. And it also gives plus 5 ranged strength, which is an awesome stat that you cannot find on the Fury at all. But it loses its defensive and uh, melee bonuses completely as well as it gives lower prayer bonus, so it definitely is a trade-off, but I think it will be worth for us if we're gonna use the bow in as many places as I expect. So now, after we've created our necklace of anguish, I wanted to talk about big overarching goals. Ever since I created this UIM, the biggest overarching goal I had was to max, because I've never maxed an account on this game, and in February of this year, we managed to pull that off. So since then, I was busy filling out the collection log, but there was one section that I couldn't grasp how to deal with, and that was the bossing section of it. So my solution to that was to get one big weapon that could carry me in multiple places, and that is, of course, the bow of Firedinen from the Corrupted Gauntlet that I can take pretty much anywhere, and it doesn't cost too much inventory space, but it will carry me at many, many, many places. So we did get it, we took it places, we had our fun, and now I wanted to move on to another part of the collection log that is still not solved for me, and that is clues. Clues are arguably the biggest part of the collection log, and there is one thing I can do to ensure that I will never have to drop another clue again, and that is build and fill all of the stash units. I already have all of the beginner, easy and medium stashes built and filled, and I only have 16 stashes left for 100% completion, and that is 2 hard, 4 elite and 10 master stashes. Obviously, they are not gonna be the easiest ones, actually quite the contrary, there are some items that will take many hours to get to fill the hardest master stashes, such as Zamrak and Bandos God Swords, Dragon Chain Body, Plate Skirt, Two-Hander and Pickaxe, and Bryophyta's Staff, just to name a few. But I think picking that as our third overarching goal will be very, very beneficial to entire future of this series, so... Let's get started, shall we? 
logical first step would be to go to Calphite Queen, not only because we just finished our new range upgrade and she's our current Slayer task, but also because she can drop a couple of the items we need for the stashes, so it would be like working on a couple of the stashes at the same time. But I'm gonna actually start with Pyramid Plunder first, and the main point of that is Jagex is planning to add the Dragon Pickaxe to Calphite Queen's drop table, so there is little reason to do her now, it's better to do her when we can get even more stuff from her, so I think I'm gonna try and get the Scepter now. There's actually one pretty interesting thing regarding Pyramid Plunder and hunting for the Pharaoh's Scepter that I just read on the wiki. Regarding the, let's say, recent changes, uh, we weren't really sure if it's still efficient to open sarcophagus or not, and the consensus was you just open the sarcophagi at room 8 or maybe 7. But now, according to the wiki, actually the rates are the highest for sarcophagi at room 4, and they start rare and go more common towards room 4 and then start being rarer and rarer and actually room 8 is the rarest to get the scepter so uh, I guess the strategy is to only open the sarcophagus at room 4 and just the chest in every other room and there we go we got the scepter took a couple evenings and I obviously had to pick it up because these things stay on the ground for a very short time. But here's one interesting thing. It doesn't have a drop or a destroy option. And as a UIM, I was extremely weirded out by this. So I had to check the wiki and apparently you cannot drop it until you uncharge it. Obviously, I, I don't want to drop it, but it's still kind of interesting. And here on floor 7 of Pyramid Plunder is where we build the stash. The other components required are the mana fight clothes. And you can get those by bringing three dice of the same color to a dude in Sofanem. And then Ali Morrisane will start selling them. So they are relatively easy to obtain compared to the Pharaoh's Scepter. And that is the first stash of our little journey. Completed 1 out of 16 down. The next stash I want to go for is the one with Bryophyta's staff, so we will be hunting moss giants and doing beginner clues along the way, and with beginner clues every single inventory slot counts. I just smithed 16,000 Mishril Dark Tips and we will be using Blowpipe, so I had to visit Hespori, and it's a great time to use up those U logs we got from Zolra and I can use that space in looting bag to put in something else, because with beginner clues, as I said, every inventory slot counts. We can use that inventory slot for another ladder to speed up the clues exponentially. Logs cut, inventory organized, and this is the setup I'm gonna use. Just bought 16,000 feathers, but I'm not gonna make all of the darts at once. I'll just make them while running towards all the different clues we need to do. And uh, we will probably be doing a lot of clues because to get 80 keys to be on drop rate, that's the plan. We need approximately 12,000 moss giants because each key is 1 in 150. So I hope these darts will be enough and if not, we'll just make some more. There is a possibility to get a higher drop rate if you do moss giants in the wilderness, but I definitely don't want to do that. But I still can get a little bit better drop rate, 1 in 120, if you kill the most giants in Ironworth Dungeon. So it might end up uh, that we will go there. But for now, I will be starting uh, giants in the Catacombs of Current for the Ancient Shards and for the Totem Pieces. One last thing before we jump into killing most giants. I'm noting my prayer XP on the side because I filled my Bone Crusher. And if we're about to kill about 12,000 Moss Giant, that's a lot of prayer XP that would otherwise just rot on the ground. So I would like to know how much we get after obtaining 80 keys. After some time, it became painfully clear that holding on to my crystal armor in the inventory is just not the play. Clues were taking so long because I was operating with like zero inventory space. So I switched to deposit the void in my POH and I equipped crystal body and legs 
Uh, with this, I will have to make sure to always pray protect from melee against the giants. Otherwise, the charges will be dropping like flies. So I rebought my barrels gloves, and now I'm just gonna use Helm of Nate's Not for a little bit of prayer bonus. We also managed to get a Nature Talisman, which is a component of that stash, together with Bryophyta's Essence. So I plan to visit Hespori one more time and stash it in Hespori. I don't think I will die ever while uh, killing most giants. But I will do that when we get like one or two more Dark Totems, so I can clear them out in an efficient manner as well. And I think the timing couldn't have been more perfect while my main UIM is collecting keys in the catacombs of Kurend. My free-to-play UIM was also collecting keys all of this time and I've just managed to hit 100 giant keys. So this is time to unlock some stored dopamine. I have 202 Ober KC and no heal giant clubs so it would be perfect to get that collection log slot, but also, you know, runes, GP, Alka Balls, Diamonds, Rubies, these are all fantastic things to get, so I'll be happy with pretty much everything, except Limpwords and Cosmic Runes. Not much of those, please. Didn't have to wait too long, like 19 keys into the grind, we got one previously. Here's the Hill Giant Club and that collection log slot filled with it uh, where is Obor? yes, greened out 221 kills to get it let's see what it looks like oh, it's, it's two handed, I'll have to drop the clue really cool um there is actually no reason at all for me to keep this, so I will probably be alking it yeah, it, I can drop it to my uh, reg for close to 500k, but I think having 36k on this account is worth more for me. And the biggest thing, of course, is the field collection log slot. I got a key to half like four days ago, and I kept it in my inventory on the off chance that we will get a loop half too. And here we go. One enhanced crystal key. They are coming in extremely slow, and I randomly record clips of me opening the chest, but I'll never include them, just because I never get anything good. Uh, and I highly doubt that we will get anything good now too, but there is a chance. I'm probably the happiest just to free up that inventory slot. At some point the inventory got too cluttered to function properly, so I visited Hespori and did some reorganizing. First I planted all of the seeds I had in the inventory, Cadentine, Lantadime and Snapdragons. We will be getting them back as soon as we go back to Moss Giants, but I also stored my three totems at Arno, and we can do them one by one if we fill out our inventory and then withdraw one, so I will be doing that in a second. Uh, we also made a bunch more darts we were running out of them uh, faster than i anticipated so i decided to stock up on those and i will be using my helm on the jaw well i don't know how so i will have to first learn how to do that uh, but that will save me one more bug slot that i could spend on something else and there's a little bit more space also one mystery box we showed the jaw to Olaf, so let's combine it with the helmet for the first time on the account. And we have the Nate is not face guard. But first, an elite clue. Ah, uh, it's Iron Dragon Mask. Alright, I was already excited to maybe get the... I don't remember, was it a black or lava dragon mask? For the um, stash unit, never mind that. Uh, and also we got a master, so I guess I am doing that now. This is gonna be the 8th step, and even though it was an 8th stepper, this was probably the fastest master clue of my life, and it consisted of 7 
fast, extremely fast steps and sadly one triple step with two wilderness steps. But the upside of that is that since we had to go and die, I can do Scotizo with pretty much an empty inventory. Scotizo was very, very cooperative those three times. I hope you can even hear me through that fun that's going on. But it looks like we didn't get anything good. This drop is pretty significant because those 50 big bones mean that I have now completed my pretty stupid goal of having 1000 noted big bones. On my free to play UIM, there is actually no point in having this, and dragging those big bones with me is actually a waste of space and it slows me down considerably. If I didn't keep this, I could do clues faster on average. But I am so glad I have completed this and I will not be using this up. I will use up the diamonds and rubies when we get done with Bryophyta in the far, far future. But I think I'll keep the big bones. Maybe not forever, but for a long time. I really like having them. Last key. And that's the last Ober KC we're gonna do for a long, long while. Also a good drop, diamonds and rubies, we like this. And this clue scroll will be the last one for 400, so I'll see you soon with that, but to wrap up Obor, we got two hill giant clubs in the end, and I alked both. We got some runes, and probably the most important thing is the thousand big bones. I don't have the loot from this. 100 keys saved anywhere because it combined with my previous Ober KC. Uh, but I do have my total lifelong Ober KC of 309 on the free to play UIM. So I'm gonna do that clue now and I'll see you soon with it. And to wrap up this little grind, here is 400 beginner caskets. If we check the collection log, I did 600 before. So after we open this little stack, we will be at crisp, clean, 1000 beginner clues completed. And as you can see, I still need two items to finish to green this log on the free to play. And that's black pickaxe and ceradomin rune scimitar ornament kit. So I will just start opening this and maybe gathering just the unique so I can drop over to my uh, main, to my reg. But otherwise, I will not be selling stuff to the shop like I did with the 600 in the past. Yes! We got the black pickaxe. I was pretty sure that this is the Saradomin ornament kit. But alas, it was Zami. Uh, where is the black pickaxe though? Yes, there it is. Black pickaxe. All right. So uh, at least we have one collection log slot done uh, from this opening. And there is still a pretty high chance I will be able to finish this after all. Woo! Yes, I completely missed it. But we did get the Rune Scimitar Ornament Kit for Saradomin. And my game is lagging because there's so much stuff on the ground. Let's see what this looks like. This was actually the one I wanted, but I don't want it anymore. So let's dismantle and I will be dropping it over. But that means our beginner clue log is greened out at 800 and eight because I clicked one more uh, because I was doing this so fast but yes yes very happy about this let's just open the remaining 191 and move on to some other content and since we completed our log why not have a little bit of fun and once again steal the page from Mr. Guides from Assault Book and spam click those last 100 beginner caskets. 
Ah, I hope I don't get too many items I would like to drop to my reg because I think they might overwrite on the ground if there's so many. But yes, that is 1000 beginner clues completed on the free to play UIM. feels pretty good. Let's actually look at the log total, what we got. So this is just for the, if, if you're going for 1000 clues, this is pretty much what you can expect. Uh, and also, I will have to compare some clips from before, but we also looks like got about 140 nature runes. And about 100 lore runes, so that is by itself pretty good. Two final little bits of information. When I dropped over all of the unique items to my reg, the total worth was about 2.2 mil. So that is obviously very poggers. And I have relogged now and after checking the entire UIM high scores, we are on the front page of beginner clues for all the UIMs in the game at rank 22, so very, very happy about that. That's my first front page on this character. Back to the main UIM, I had to take a short break from grinding mossy keys because one of our own UIM, Apol, died at Dagon of Kings, and since the death changes for UIM, this is now the most dangerous place you can die at. And it's pretty easy to wipe because picking up your items when you're getting barraged by three DKs is very, very hard. So every time this happens, the entire UIM clan rallies up and we escort the person so they can get their stuff safely. And well, all I gotta say is this is why I love this clan, man. Uh, I never experienced such kindness in any other clan in this game. Managed to get up to 73 keys before our stack of darts ran dangerously low. We have about 500 left, so I will leave all that for killing Bryophyta itself. And now we are switching to using a whip. As you can see, the inventory is an absolute mess, so I will also no longer be doing clues. Uh, after we get done with 80 keys, I'll use up all of those seeds, use up the totems. And then we will uh, continue doing the clues that we get from the boss. Praise the lord of those catacombs. We finally managed to get 80 mossy keys. Actually, is Scoutizo technically the lord of those catacombs? Never mind. Anyways, before we use up those 80 keys, I think I will go and lie down nicely on the ground in Privdinas so I can use up those dark totems in a semi-efficient manner and then we will commence to killing Bryophyta and we will be also stacking all of the beginner caskets we get from her. Uh, hopefully we'll get the essence because that's the main thing we go for and we should also hit 300 beginners so that will be very sweet. You might remember that at the start I noted down my prayer XP so Getting those 80 keys took three weeks and uh, we got 438,000 prayer XP from the bone crusher charges and using up and sold heads. And I also noted down my starting construction XP because we got a bunch of those long and curved bones and we got 153k construction XP. And all of that pretty much zero time. Six totems used up and Scotizo defeated. We didn't get any cool uniques, otherwise you would have seen it. But we did get a bunch of Onyx bolt tips. So this will be 650k in Alks once I use this up. Also 10 uncut dragon stones. That's another 100k if we make it into bracelets. So that's a good bit of GP. I also have a lot of Ancient Shards, probably the most I ever had from killing those most giants and a little bit from Scotizo. And since my Arc Light is at full charges, I have no idea what I will be doing with those. Probably just holding on to them for the time being. And we got some clues, so let's pet the dog for good luck. 
Who's a good doggy? And now we can open some clues. Here's three heart clues. No luck with the hearts so far. And uh, the elite. No luck with that too. Since I'm already killing Bryophyte, I might as well do that last combat task that I have left and kill her on a free-to-play world. So I bought a bunch of green dehyde gear and we got a rune square shield as a drop. We also got two rune bars, so let's smith a rune scimitar and that should be enough. I'll also get like two more food and uh, I think we can take her on. Fighting as intended too. All Breath Fighter tasks done. Easy peasy. And this will be exactly 100 KC at Bryophyta and the key stack is looking slim, still no essence and I am fearing that we might get over the drop rate. Yes, I lost all hope. I did, I admit it, I lost all hope but there we go with two keys left, KC 120 Bryophyta's essence. Let's finish up those two remaining keys and get on with making the stuff. And this is the last Bryophyta KC. The last key has been used. I'll not be picking up this beginner because I have a nice stack of 300 and that looks so nice. I don't want to bump it up to 301. But the most important thing is we got the essence. This is what we came here for. The entire loot from all the 122 Bryophyta kills will be on the screen right now. And let's go make the stuff. The place where the stash is located is Gwyneth and that's north of Priftinus. This is also, to be honest, one of my absolutely favorite looking places in all of OSRS. And the reason why I decided to build this master stash unit for my 99 construction screenshot. Uh, and, and it sat empty ever since. So let's fill it out now. Make the stuff. Cool little animation. And fill it in. And that's two out of 16 stashes filled in the first episode of trying to fill stashes. Extremely happy about that. Especially since this one was one of the longest. Three weeks hunting keys, but at least it paid off. And that would be it for the episode, if not for the fact that the Bryophyta's Essence was my collection log slot number 599. And I just physically cannot leave it like that. So I have a bunch of goodies from AFK in Redwoods today. Let's try those six bird eggs for a piece of evil chicken outfit but we didn't get it so maybe a baguette no all right so let's use this heart clue also no all right game you're leaving me no choice I went back to the worst piece of content in the game and I got enough points to buy the Greek color scan which will be our last collection log slot for 600 and the last collection log slot for Thai Farm. It's all greened out now and it feels amazing. I would love to say I don't have to come here anymore, but I probably will be it for the herb sack, for a replacement seed box or for another part of the farmer's outfit for the stash. But for now, I don't have to be here anymore, so sincerely, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, I hope you had a great day, and I hope to see you in the next one, goodbye.